do you have a company with more than one shareholder? And this is something that could be useful to you either now or in the future. I want to speak to you about companies buying back their own shares. This could be useful when you want to sell your own shares in the company, when you want to buy somebody else's shares in the company, or perhaps somebody just wants to retire and to dispose of their shares. Now, I'm not talking about complicated arrangements here, but in these simple scenarios, there are really two options. Either somebody has to buy the shares, or the company can buy the shares. The question of finance is likely to be an issue. Now, if you want to buy somebody else's shares, where are you going to get the money? Probably from your company as taxed income. But this means you have to take a lot more money out because some of it will be lost in tax. This is therefore an expensive and inefficient route. I would therefore suggest that you look carefully at the possibility of the company buying back its own shares. In this scenario, the company finances the purchase and there is no loss in tax. This is therefore a very tax efficient way to proceed. It can also be very tax efficient for the vendor. The vendor will receive the payment as a capital sum and so be subject to capital gains tax and we'll come back to that in a minute. The company must be an unquoted company. There are various conditions which must be met and we can discuss these another time. Some of these are spelled out in the Companies Act and need careful scrutiny. But basically you need a properly approved contract for the purchase of the shares. The contract can be conditional, but if it doesn't exist, then the share purchase cannot proceed. The payment for the shares bought back by the company will potentially be eligible for entrepreneur's relief, and therefore any gain taxed at 10%. To qualify, it must be a material disposal, and HMRC on their website say that this amounts to 5% of your holding. This is a generous relief, but as always, there are traps waiting to catch out the unwary. The main conditions for qualifying for entrepreneur's relief are that you hold at least 5% of the shares or voting power, that it's a trading company, and that you are either a director or an employee of the company. But probably the most important words on this slide are that the qualification is for the year ending with the date of disposal. Now, not all exits from a company are amicable, and you may be tempted to resign as a director before negotiating the sale of your shares. In this case, you will not qualify for entrepreneur's relief because you are not a director or employee for the full 12 months up to the date of disposal. So we can see that combining entrepreneur's relief with the company buying back its own shares is very tax efficient. However, there are plenty of traps for the unwary. I'm Alan Long from The Long Partnership, making life less taxing.